Hello everyone, Jake here. Today we're going to stabilize some pine cones and more importantly, we're going to figure out if it's even worth doing uh, the whole stabilizing process for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two bowl blanks with pine cones and one of the sets of pine cones is going to be stabilized and the other set is not going to be stabilized. I'm going to do that on a live show. I'll put a link to it uh, down below and I'll put a card up to it later. Uh, so what I'm going to do is stabilize this stuff. First of all, we need to have some sort of oven. I have a toaster oven for this kind of thing. You need a vacuum pump and some kind of uh, vacuum chamber. This one's from Turntex and there's some on Amazon that are similar. This one's from Best Vax. It's a glass vac. The thing about the chambers like this don't get the ones with the plastic lid because they will crack and leak and, and break and pro possibly hurt you. So make sure you get the one with the glass lid and I'll put links to all the stuff you need below. So now let's uh, start about what we, the process of stabilizing. Um, I also have another video on stabilizing. It's pretty popular and I'm going to answer some of the questions that I get uh, in this video also. So what we're going to do is this is at 220 degrees Fahrenheit not Celsius that's one of the things I forgot to mention last time was this is Fahrenheit so basically you want this above boiling so that moisture in here will steam out of it that's my understanding of it uh, so um, 212 degrees Fahrenheit is uh, boiling so I have this at 220 basically I have enough in here I have some stabilized wood I'm going to put at the bottom of this also so this is going to make a good blank. So I'm going to put these in here. It's 220 degrees and I'm going to leave it in there for probably three or four hours and then we'll come back. These are the pine cones that I have. I have some other, other kind too, but for this, this project, this uh, experiment, we're going to use these. These are from Bonnie. She's a viewer. She sent them to me from somewhere in California. The other set that I'm going to do are going to be dry. So whether you're going to stabilize or not, you need to dry them to make sure that you don't have any, any problems with your resin. So I'm going to come back in about uh, three or four hours or so. I'll let you know how long and we'll pull those out and go to the next step. It's been 220 degrees for about four hours. I'm going to go ahead and take these out, put them in a trash bag to try to keep moisture away from it until they cool down. Then I'm going to mess with the cactus juice. Um, turn this off. Notice I do have a, uh, a extra thermometer in there because this is not accurate at all. So that's, that's how you get that to be accurate. I'm just going to put these in this bag and kind of tie it off to keep the atmosphere from getting to them and give us a better chance of doing this right. I'm going to come back in a little while. If you put these in cactus juice right now, the cactus juice is going to start trying to, to set off and I'll explain that in a minute. The cactus juice is a two-part epoxy uh, resin, but the second part is heat. So we don't want this, we don't want the cactus juice to get hot yet. So I'll be back in a minute. We'll talk about the cactus juice a little bit. This is the cactus juice in this container here is the catalyst that make that activates it and makes it work. So without this, you have a super long shelf life. And with this, you have months of shelf life. So, or about a year, I guess I had to get all new stuff because I hadn't stabilized in a while. So I have this, you just open this up and then Dump this in here, dump the whole thing. And don't try to like just activate just a little bit of it. Do the whole gallon. Make sure you got it all out of there. And then shake it up. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use this for this um, if I fill this up, then I'll put some in here, but I'm, hopefully I just do here so we can see the bubbles better. I don't really know how much it's going to take, so I'll just leave it right there for a minute and wait for those to cool down a little bit more. These are, it's been about an hour or so. These are room temperature. I'm just going to put them in here. We'll push that down as best we can. We have this thing that comes with this vacuum chamber that... You squish it down. 
and wedge it in there and it should stay and we want to add a little bit more of this I don't want this too tall because I don't want it overflowing and getting in I'll show you that in a second but I do want it over our material and that should be good enough We don't want the bubbles going out of here, so I just kind of keep it under control until we know we can go to full vacuum. And we're already there. I'm going to let this thing run until the bubbles stop or pretty much all the way stop. And then uh, we'll let it soak. There's barely any bubbles coming out of this anymore. Uh, it's only been about a half an hour and the directions say to do two times the amount of time it was under vacuum to let it soak that long. I'm not in a hurry and I do believe the longer you let it soak, the better your results are gonna be. So I'll be back in the morning and we'll take these out and I will drip dry them and I'll show you how to do that. And we'll be back in the morning. I'm wearing Zach Higgins shirt today. He's part of the reason why I'm doing this. We came up with the idea to do this experiment. So all I'm going to do is take these pine cones out and put them over. I have a tray over that other vacuum chamber. It's going to, just going to drip dry these cones in there. If you can see, the pine cones aren't trying to come to the surface. They're sinking now. So that tells me that's a good uh, stabilization. So on to the next part. All right, I let it sit on that rack for about four hours. If you have the time, you can let it sit for as long as you want to and let that stuff drip off of there. Uh, one of the hot topics from my last stabilizing video was, do you wrap each individual piece of wood or pine cone in aluminum foil? Well, I don't, and I think I can, uh, I'm not gonna tell you what to do or anything like that, but um, to each their own, but this, this is the pan that goes at the bottom, and this is what I just pulled out of there, and I, uh, I'm just gonna put new foil on it and put it in there. So that just shows you how much stuff comes out of that. So if I had each individual piece of wood wrapped up in foil, that this would have I would have had to clean this off the wood. So just keep that in mind when you're deciding how to do that. If you believe in the uh, aluminum foil around each piece, then then go for it. But this is this is how I do it, and. So this will go underneath there like that. And we'll get this thing, I have this thing set on a switch. Uh, so that'll get up to 200 degrees. And I'll leave this in here for a couple hours and check it. The good thing is, I don't think you can overcook it, but you can undercook it. So if you're not sure, just leave it in there for a little while longer and I'll be back. So here we are, it's been about five or six hours. And what I'm going to do, I have a Tupperware thing here and trash bag, so I'm going to put these in here. I'm going to peel the little crusty stuff off of them. I do it while it's hot because it's going to be easier. Put it in here, wrap them up, and then put them in Tupperware. Before I cast them, I'm going to heat them up, get this, make sure there's no surface moisture on them before I cast them. So let's get this, and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about here. A little crusty business. See these little pieces right here? They come right off. So we'll do that. I'll get all these uh, cleaned off and put in here. And then uh, <laughs> I'll be ready to cast these things. I have the pine cones here ready. I also have two pieces of maple burl that I'm gonna make part of the bowls. So one of them obviously is gonna be stabilized with this stuff. I have another bag of pine cones that's not stabilized. I'm just going to dry it. I'm going to do that on a live show. So the link to the live show is right here and here are the blanks. Well, here we are. Uh, once again, that video will be up there uh, of us making this live. These are stabilized pine cones in this one and uh, non-stabilized in this one. I call this one the clown bowl and this is three shades of copper. I'll give you a close up of these.
Now I'm gonna go turn these. I'm gonna see if there's any problems, uh, anything like that. I'm gonna make a turning video on these stabilized versus non-stabilized. Uh, I'm gonna put them out at the, this video and the other one out at the same time, so that link will be below and up there. Uh, so go watch that if you like watching turning videos. If not, I'm gonna come back when this is these are finished, and then I'll tell you what I found. <laughs> yeah, I'm not touching these together. Uh, this one is the stabilized one. It I had to fix a few things on it, and this one is a non-stabilized one. I had to fix a lot of things on it. I'm actually did a whole nother video on turning these and fixing them and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'll give my opinion at the end of that. But if you don't like turning, then here's the answer. I had to fix everything on this one. Obviously, this one is a non-stabilized one. Everything out here, I cut these when I made the blanks. I cut them like this and I set them in there like that. So on the inside, I didn't have to fix very much. But if there was one of these seed pod things and somebody correct me in the comments or a hundred people correct me in the comments of what the outside part is called. Once you turn that, the stuff flies out of there and you have to repair it, fill it with glue. I did it with brown star bond. I'll have uh, links to all of this stuff below, but these it turned out pretty well. So at the, the end result is both of these are awesome. And the one that has stabilized, I fixed like three or four out here. That's all I had to fix. I had to fix a couple things in here. That's it. So my answer to this is if you have this stuff to stabilize and you can stabilize, uh, I think it's definitely worth your time to do it. But if you don't, that, that shouldn't make you scared to do pine cones. You just got to have to know in your mind that you're going to have to repair some things. So I can look at both of these and I can't tell. Like I know because I turned it that all of these are repaired. But if I give this to somebody as a gift or whatever, they, they're not going to know. And it, and it looks good to me. And I'm sitting here looking at it right now and I can't really tell. Um, this one was more enjoyable to turn for sure. So there, there's my short answer. It's, it'll be worth it to me because I have the stuff, but if you don't have the stuff, uh, the project is still gonna turn out well. Uh, it's just way more enjoyable to turn. So there is a big difference. It's not that hard to stabilize them. Um, I'm gonna put a video right here of me making the blank and a video right here of me uh, turning it. So you guys have a good day. See you next time and y'all be good.